Hello there and welcome to another installment of the Fry Smiles Oral Health Network. I am your host, Scott Fry, and we have a really interesting show for you here today. Uh, you know, we've talked a little bit on the show here in some of our posts about balancing and maintaining your oral pH, and we've shown you firsthand how some of these acids that are in sodas, sports drinks, and some of these organic drinks out there, what these acids are actually doing to your teeth over time. But today, we're going to be taking a look at acids in mouthwashes. You'll probably be a little surprised to find that with most of these mouthwashes, they're not as good for your teeth as you might think. Uh, obviously, the claims on the bottles here of uh, being anti-gingivitis and whatever, you know, obviously these claims aren't unsupported, but they're really not giving you the full truth about what these mouth rinses are doing to your teeth and gums. And you definitely want to take a more holistic approach to your oral health if you want to get long-lasting results. So the major problem with these mouth rinses is actually their acidity. And you know that's there to preserve the shelf life of these mouth rinses. But naturally, since you're going to be swishing with them for you know, 30 seconds to a minute, uh, you should be pretty concerned with the level of acids that are going to be in these mouth rinses. Um, at least I am anyway. Uh, I went ahead and grabbed two armfuls of as many mouthwashes as I could carry. Uh, and I sat around here with my handy pH meter testing uh, the pH of all of these mouth rinses. And you'll probably be surprised to find that actually the worst and most acidic mouthwashes were some of these all-natural mouthwashes like Tom's of Maine and those are actually pretty comparable with their pH being down around three to gargling with diet soda before you go to bed. So that's not too great for your teeth. You know, I have the complete list of all the pHs down below in a table and you can go ahead and check those out. Uh, now, although it is true that having a slightly acidic pH is going to help uh, incorporate fluoride into your enamel, uh, so acidi acidity is not all bad all the time. Um, this has you know, really only been shown to occur in fluoride gels and in solutions with concentrations of fluoride that are much higher than you're going to find in your average over-the-counter fluoride rinse. So this acidic fluoridation is actually really best done in your dentist's office. And you're not going to get any be added benefit over having an acidic fluoride rinse at home. At least that hasn't been proven in any studies. And I think that you know, there's actually more of a net negative to having a daily rinse with fluoride that has uh, an acidic pH rather than you know, it being positive for your teeth. It is still very, uh, a very good idea to rinse with a low fluoride mouthwash every night before you go to bed. And this has really been shown in a lot of great studies about how beneficial this is. So you know, even though there isn't an ideal over-the-counter fluoride rinse that you can easily pick up at the store, your best bet is actually going to be going ahead and using something like the ACT Restoring Mouthwash, since its pH is pretty close to neutral uh, at only 6.6. .6. If you're going to be using a mouthwash without fluoride at home, you really don't want it to even be touching your lips unless it has an alkaline pH, like the rebalancing rinse that we discussed on, on our episode two weeks ago, uh, or if you're going to be using something like the TheraBreath, which is actually a pretty good alternative to that rebalancing rinse if you don't want to make one at home yourself. Using one of these acidic rinses without fluoride is actually going to put you at risk for acid erosion of your teeth, and the frequency of acidic events is also that you have throughout the day also determines the type of bacteria that's going to grow on your teeth. So you really don't want to add in any more acid to your day than you already have. If you go ahead and do that, you're really going to find that some nastier bacteria are going to grow because there's an environment there that's going to facilitate their growth as opposed to you know, keeping them in check. So anyway, that's our show for today. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, in future posts, we're really going to be talking a little bit more about some of the topics we introduced today and going into greater detail. But as always, share this post with as many friends as you possibly can so we can get the word out. And I'd love to hear in the comments below what fluoride or mouth rinse you fluoride mouth rinse you used to use as opposed to what you're going to be using after listening to this post. Thanks.